Hello everybody, it's Sarah here from SH Millinery with another tutorial and this time we're going to be making a blocked turban. So we'll be making a base for our turban and then attaching our fabric. Now for this you'll need either a basic crown block or a dolly block or if you haven't got either of those, a polystyrene head, just something that you, where you've got the top half. We'll also need some Paris net um, or similar. And we'll also need some fabric. Now turbans work well if they are fairly soft drapey fabrics that you can manipulate. And here I've got some gorgeous wool mix with lots of sequins on it. And that would make a lovely turban. But what I've decided to use today is this lime green wool crepe, which should work really well. I've had this a while and I haven't decided what to make with it, so it's going to be a turban. But to add a bit of interest, I'm also thinking of using this cotton fabric which has a sort of a chinoiserie design on or a Japanese design with dragons in gold. And I thought that would make a nice contrast with the green. So we're probably going to be using both of those fabrics. The only other things you'll need are some cling film to cover your block or sarin wrap as they call it in the USA and something to hold your Paris net down with, which I'll be using one of my blocking springs, and I do have a video how to make these. And then all you'll need apart from that is pins and uh, needle and thread. So we look forward to making a start. Right, so what we've got to do first is cover our blocks so that nothing sticks. So a bit of Cling and look to see which is the front and which is the back. Although this box is pretty much the same on both sides, I think that's the front. front. And then I want some Paris net that's going to stretch over the block. And I'm probably going to need a double layer. So. Let me see. I tend to do it by eye, but to be honest, you should you should really measure and figure it out. But by eye as well, I mostly do. <laughs> and as a lot of people will know from my videos, sometimes that doesn't work, and I've done it all wrong. I described Paris Net in my video on millinery materials, for those of you who haven't seen it in action again, or uh, before rather. Now we've got to wet this and make it pliable so that it makes the starch pliable in the fabric. Now normally you would steam it, but uh, I haven't brought the steam over, so I'm just putting it in some water. Then I'll let the water drain out. So we drape this over. Now I want more at the back than at the front, obviously, because you, you, your turban will come down further at the back than the front. So I've got the front facing me here. Put these crossways. Like so. <coughs> Right now what we do is take our blocking spring or, or your blocking string, whatever you're using, get that onto the block, pull your Paris net down. And crinkles as I can. So smooth it out so that you haven't got too many pleats in the net. I'm just using my eyes to figure out where the ears and everything are going to go. So, right, when you think you've got it on nicely and you're happy with it, 
we do nothing now we let that dry right now once your paris net is dry i couldn't show you the next bit because it was too difficult to video <laughs> i'll explain what i've done is i've trimmed off most of the excess and i folded back the edges and steam ironed them in place and I cut a little V there because I wanted that to come further back on the forehead. I wanted it higher on the forehead. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you haven't got enough net anywhere, the good thing about when you block a base is you can add to it. And I wasn't happy with the length over the ears. So I added a little bit of Paris net to both sides and that made it more slopey over the ears. And I think I'm happy with the shape now. Now, what I did forget to say is you will need something for padding the edge, because obviously this is a bit of a rough edge. So what you'll need is something like Domet or um, some Winciet fleece or something like that. Now, everything for this hat has to be cut on the bias, so we need it to have stretch, as you can see. Now, I've got probably about just enough to go around this hat for the edge. <clears throat> so, I'm going to cut a long strip. I had to rummage about in the... Uh, bits and bobs box to find something but I found this so that's good I mean at a push you can just double over some bias binding or something like that just so you've got a soft edge on the edge of the hat because you obviously you don't want it to be uncomfortable so I'm cutting a strip about two inches wide doesn't have to be perfect because the hat is going to be lined there's going to be all sorts going on so so there we have I've got our soft fleecy edge for the edge of the hat so what will happen is this will come off the block I'll work out where my back edge is and I'll fold this over and I'll stitch this on Okay, all the way around. So I'm going to do that now and I'll come back to you in a little while. Now with regard to the fabric for the hat, again, it's all got to be cut on the cross. You can't have straight fabric, you need stretch to it. And what we'll need to do is cut quite a few lengths for covering the hat. And we also need a length for covering the domet that we put round the edge. Now, um, it's up to you how wide you make your strips and how much material you'll need because it depends on the width of your fabric. But allow for about three quarters of a metre, three quarters of a, a yard of fabric to cut on the cross. And... If you think about a hat, you'll probably want wider strips in the middle and slightly narrower. Now, we have to turn over the edges, so you've got to allow for that as well. So what I'm probably going to do is do about um, a six to eight inch strip for the middle and then cut more strips equal distances for the rest of the hat. And I want one strip about two inches wide that will go around the demet. I hope this makes <laughs> I hope this makes sense. Anyway, I shall cut some fabric. So I'm cutting a strip really just for my edge at the moment. Now I suggest you um, mark all these out before you cut them, but you know me. I, 
<laughs> I don't do things by the book. Right, so that's going to be my edge to go around the demet. And as you can see, because you're doubling over or you're folding over the edges, you will need to cut quite wide strips, okay? So I'm going to carry on cutting strips at least twice that width and one very wide for the middle. So um, I'm going to carry on with that and show you them all in a moment. Here's the wadding, the domet was put on and sewn on. And then I've sewn a strip of bias fabric all the way around the edge so that we've got something to stitch to. Now you have to pull the fabric as you sew it on, otherwise it won't fit nicely because you, you want it to fit all around the curves. And then we've got to start with our fabric strips. Now what I've done is I've ironed all my fabric strips so that they're nice and um, crease free. Now this is gonna be our middle strip, this first one. So I'm going to cut this raw edge off. And with a needle and thread, I'm going to gather one edge. Oop. Get that in the end. So I'm gonna run a gathering stitch across the front end. And I'm going to work out <clears throat> how much I want it gathered. Um, I mean, I think quite a bit. So I'm going to go for something like that and I'm just going to put a stitch in to keep it. Um, okay, so this is going to be our first strip across the front. Make sure <clears throat> you've got the middle of the hat um, where you want it. What I'm going to do is just ease the folds and put some pins in so that I can see where they're going to be. Now I'll do it this way around so you can see and then I'll have to turn it around so I can see it. Ah, the fun. So. so. Break over, you want to stretch it so that it fits really snugly. And so you get the, um, stay, stay hat. So you get the creases and the folds. Now obviously the wider the fabric, the more folds you'll have at your disposal. Anyway, let's, uh, let's pin that down at the back. but anyway you can see how it's building up now I said I wanted to put something a little bit different in one side so I've cut a strip of this cotton fabric my only my only worry is that because it's not stretched
going to say, these turbans take a long time to do. This is not a cheap hat. <laughs> it does take a long time. And what I'm going to do is stitch my, what I've done rather and I am doing, is I've stitched my contrasting fabric down through into the base because there are a lot thinner pieces of fabric <clears throat> and uh, I don't want them to come adrift. What I wanted to do was show you that <clears throat> um, when you're adding a lot of fabric, if you keep on folding it over the edge, you're obviously going to make the hat smaller and smaller. Now, because you add a lot of fabric to this hat, what I've tended to do is block the um, base on a slightly bigger head size than I wanted so that I'm not going to end up with adding all this fabric and then the hat size is tiny. So I'm just going to carry on stitching and then I'll show you where we're at. Right, so I'm sewing, I'm sewing on. Now, I wanted to say as well that if you've made a base, you could just block a whole piece of fabric over it. You could do that. But you don't end up with such a nice looking turban. It's very difficult to get all your pleats even. And again, you've got to use your fabric on the cross. So it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds. It can be done, but I, I rather do it this way okay what I thought I'd do so our last piece that we put on will have to have both edges folded over okay so I'm just going to pin for a moment And of course, you have to put something in the centre <clears throat> at the front so that, again, you're covering up your um, bits that you've... You can see why, why I say it takes forever to do. But all good things are worth the wait, aren't they? Now, what I've decided to do is I've decided I want a little bit of interest at the back. So I've cut a piece of my contrasting fabric and folded it over. Okay, now I'm going to stitch it this way round, just, just here, okay, at the back. I'm going to have to take it off the block to do that. And I'm going to stitch all the way through the hat. And what that means is, when I come round to the back and I'm adjusting my fabric around the back here, what I can do is fold that over and then stitch that underneath. Now, normally you'd have something like that at the front, but I thought, oh, that'd be nice at the back as well. So what I'll do is I'll fold this round, stitch it all in place, Fold that over and then stitch underneath like that. So I hope you can see that. Okay. I debated about what to put on the front and I wasn't going to put a tab <clears throat> at first because I would have put that on before I stitched those on. But then I thought, well, actually, I've done a tab on the back, so I'll do a tab on the front. And what I've done is 
cut an oblong there, ironed over the sides, giving it a bit of a gathering stitch here. And I'm going to tuck it in neatly. Because as I say, I should have really done this at the beginning. But there we are. See, I changed my mind halfway through things. Take it off the block. Stitch it in place right through the hat because it's got to be secure. There we have it stitched to the inside. That's the back one. That's the front one. Now I'm really annoyed because I've caught the fabric, the wool fabric here. So I'm going to try and poke that catch back through. But be careful when you're using buckram because the fabric can catch. Now if you use a lighter weight fabric, um, chiffon or something, you might want to cover the, the um, buckram or Paris net first with um, just some plain fabric so that you can't see through the, the chiffon. And obviously the lighter the weight fabric, the less bulk you've got inside, whereas wool looks nice on turbans, but that's going to drive me mad. So I'm going to have to sort that out. And so that's how we are at the moment. And we've now got to do the lining and obviously the Petersham sweatband. Now, if you need to, just do some little tiny tacky stitches, hold everything down so it's all firm and not going anywhere. Thank you very much. Now, what I'm going to do is put some cling film, saran wrap, what do you call it, over my block. Now I am going to line with the self same fabric. Now normally I wouldn't do that because wool crepe is obviously very expensive, but I have tons of it. So what I've done is I've covered, I've cut um, a piece big enough, I believe, for the inside, and I've wet it. So I've soaked this and wrung it out in warm water. And so I'm going to stretch it down my block and pin it in place further down than your hat will come okay because we're going to put the hat back on top of this stretch the fabric right down and pin like this do north south east west first You can't get rid of all the creases when you when you do this because I'm just obviously blocking a, a square piece onto a round peg, if you know what I mean. But just get out as many as the crinkles as you can. Pull it down. So you push it right down on top like that leave it to dry there we are looks a bit strange now okay it will take a while to dry because obviously it's got to dry through all those layers so uh, we'll leave that to dry right so my lining has been left overnight to dry and as you can see I've just roughly trimmed so now we're going to take off and you'll see it has stuck to the inside a bit, not a great deal, but so what I'm going to have to do now is trim it to fit. So I'm going to trim it all the way around to fit 
Uh, I'll have just put some pins in for a minute while we're chatting. But it's quite a nice shape. Make sure it fits really snugly at the bottom. You don't want the hat bouncing on the on the head. So what I've got to do is trim all that, stitch it in neatly, and then put my Petersham ribbon all the way around, which you'll have to swirl to fit. And you'll see, because the hat is shaped, I've had to swirl the um, Petersham so that it goes up and down, so that I've got the up for the curved sides and then the down for the other parts of the hat, okay? So like that. So we're going to sew that on now. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I want to give out a big shout out and a thank you to all our members who help support this channel. And if you'd like to become a member and um, get discounts and exclusive videos, etc., free patterns, just see the link above. Thank you.